Coming up on the Tuesday edition of LSU Sports Showtime, we've reached the culmination of the college basketball season. We'll break down where the Tigers will be going and who they'll be playing in the upcoming NCAA tournament. And the baseball team hosted their first SEC weekend series of the year. Would they come out on top or fall for a second straight week? And of course, the campus finals results for men's and co-rec intramural basketball. All that and a special set of top plays of the semester. Sports Showtime is coming at you. Welcome to Sports Showtime, your source for everything LSU athletics. I'm Mary Claire Palmer. And I'm Chris Hagan. Brian Tompkins is out today with flu-like symptoms. Later we'll have the results from this weekend's tennis and track and field championships. But first, the latest from the men's basketball team. The disappointment for LSU men's basketball over the last few weeks continued through the weekend. The Tigers traveled to Tampa Bay where they fell to the Bulldogs of Mississippi State in the semifinals. Fans knew the loss would hurt LSU's tournament resume, but they didn't expect the Tigers to receive as low, as, as low of a seed as they did. That's right, Chris. LSU was seeded as an eighth seed in the NCAA tournament, and they're slated to square off against Butler this Friday in Greensboro, North Carolina. Should they advance, the Tigers would most likely play number one seed in their bracket, UNC. Mississippi State would go on to win the SEC tournament against Tennessee in the finals, giving the SEC only three teams in the 2009 NCAA tournament. I now welcome our resident basketball expert, Jason Temp Template, to the set. As mentioned, the Tigers received an eight seed in the tournament. It came as a huge surprise to most. And you know, how do you feel about this this seeding, Jason, and a possible matchup against UNC in the second round? Yeah, Chris, it was very surprising to me as well. While LSU dropped their last two regular season games and went out in the semifinals of the SEC tournament, they didn't deserve this eight seed. If they beat Bella, they're going to have to face the number one seeded North Carolina Tar Heels in Greensboro. That's basically a home game for the Tar Heels. Other teams who were middle of the road, in some cases worse in that conference, got higher seeds than LSU. Look at Ohio State and Texas. They weren't very good teams in that conference, but got in, and they're higher seeds if in equal to LSU. It's You're right, not fair. That seems completely ridiculous to me, but we've had you on set all year giving us your basketball expertise. Um, now it's your time to shine or either fail and burn miserably. Uh, <laughs> How do, who do you see going to the Final Four, and who's going to emerge as champion? Yeah, I failed miserably. Uh, my my last, year's, last year's bracket was pretty bad for me, but in the Midwest region, I'm going to start out, that's my favorite coaches region. That has Rick Pitino and Louisville and Michigan State with Tom Izzo as the top two seeds. I'm going to give the edge to Tom Izzo because I feel he's the best tournament coach in America. And I got UConn coming out of the West. Duke will come out of the East as Pitt will fall when DeJuan Blair gets in foul trouble. Lastly, I got Oklahoma coming out of the South region. Last but not least, my overall champion champion is Michigan State over Duke because if they get to Detroit, there's no way the Spartans are going to lose in their home state. Tom Izzo has too much pride for the state of Michigan. Well, that's some pretty bold picks there, Jason. I hope that works out for you. Thanks for joining us today. Over to you, Mary Claire. Over on the women's side, it was Selection Monday for their NCAA bracket. Yesterday afternoon, Van Chancellor and his Tigers learned that they would be staying home for the first two rounds. The six-seeded Tigers will take on Green Bay Sunday at 6 p.m. inside the Maravich Center. If the Tigers advance, they will take on the winner of three-seed Louisville and Liberty. Following the announcement, we caught up with Coach Chancellor to see how he felt about his team's draw. Well, here's the way I'm always going to feel. I'm going to be excited about being in the tournament, but whoever we drew, I thought well, I, I'd like to draw on somebody else. That's just the way I am. I'm tired of waiting. I, I, this has been a long, long day to wait all day, to sit around, to wait on this, for this to happen and finally be in it. It's exciting. Now for a little baseball action. The Tigers hosted Kentucky in their first SEC weekend series of the year. Kentucky pitcher Alex Meyer would get the start. Mario gave up only two hits and six strikeouts, one of them to Leon Landry, who's had a cold bat as of late for the Tigers. But one of those two hits would be to Ryan Schimpf. Schimpf clutched with the home run. 
two-run shot in the fourth inning, puts the Tigers up 3-1. to one. That's his second of the season. But the story of this game was Tiger pitcher Lewis Coleman. Coleman comes in, strikes out seven this game, one of them here, and then with the runner on second, run at, tying run at the plate, gets forces the grounder to, Lewis, uh, to uh, DJ LeMahieu at shortstop. Tiger fans definitely happy to see a winning effort on Sunday afternoon. Runner th thinks he gets the walk here, but Lewis Coleman takes the strikeout. The Tigers would take the Sunday showdown by a final score of 3-1, to one, clinching the series win. LSU pitcher Lewis Coleman gets the win for the Tigers. Not only did Lewis Coleman pitch the complete game Sunday, but also closed Friday night's win, earning him SEC Pitcher of the Week honors. The losses against Louisiana Lafayette last Wednesday and Kentucky Sunday morning pushed the Tigers further back in the nation's top 25 rankings. LSU now finds themselves ranked fifth in both the USA Today Coaches Poll and Baseball America Top 25 polls. Now let's go to Sports Showtime reporter Jeffrey Crowden, who has a breakdown of the weekend action from the box. This Friday at Alex Box Stadium, not even the rain could sort on LSU's right-handed pitcher Anthony Renato, who recorded 13 strikeouts to help lead the Tigers to a 5-3 victory over Kentucky. Sunday, LSU dropped the first game of a doubleheader, so Coach Manera turned to his most reliable pitcher for Game 2, Lewis Coleman. And that's why I started Coleman. I wanted him to get us off to a good start. I was really looking for him to give us five innings of a seven-inning game. But once we got through five and I, he was only at about 65 pitches, I just figured let's ride him as long as we can, and he did a tremendous job. With Coach Maneri depending on him, Coleman pitched a complete game, only giving up four hits and striking out seven Wildcat batters. Y'all all know Jared Bradford. He, uh, he did the exact same thing last year. Uh, you know, whenever he got on the mound, we knew we were going to win. We knew we had a really good shot. We just had to get two or three runs. And uh, I'm not anything close to Bradford, but that's what I, I tried to do. Although the Tigers struggled at the plate this weekend, one bright spot was left for the Jared Mitchell, who tied his school record with four stolen bases in one game. Uh, I didn't even know it was a school record, so I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, just get out there, you know, just try to, you know, help the team however I can. So it happens, you know, it'll be days like this. The Tigers look to continue their winning ways as they face Northwestern State and McNeese State midweek games this week before hitting the road to continue SEC play against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Reported for Sports Showtime, I'm Jeffrey Crowden. First pitch for tonight's game is slated for 6.30 inside Alex Box Stadium. In a battle of the elements, the LSU softball team was unable to come out on top. The number 20 Lady Tigers faced 8 Georgia in a rainy match on Saturday. Juliana Santos fired up the Tigers with a leadoff double to fight a 6-3 Tiger deficit at the start of the seventh inning. A few singles and an error by UGA pitcher Sarah McLeod closed the gap to 6-5, but it wouldn't be enough. The Tigers would fall by one in a tough loss as Cody Trahan had her five-game winning streak snapped. After starting game two down, 4-3, rain forced the Tigers inside, and the final two games of the series were suspended. You can catch the Tigers back in action tomorrow night against number two Alabama at the new Tiger Park.